Hello and welcome. If this is your first time here, I'm Garth Allen. This is Racing News Now, and we are joined today by someone we can now call an Arca Menard Series winner in the main Arca Menard Series, that is Mr. Jesse Love. How's it going today, man? It's going great. Um, I'm actually just in my home state right now in California, uh, driving around, running some errands. I uh, got a new house in North Carolina, so um, I'm trying to furnish that. I have some stuff from my old house here that I can use, so uh, just running around and getting all that stuff figured out is um, a challenge in of itself and been really busy, but uh, definitely want to get this interview in. <laughs> so let's talk about, first let's just talk about the emotions of Saturday night. Uh, after running a partial schedule last year, moving up to the Arkham and Art series in that capacity, and then another partial schedule this year, you've been close a number of times to that win and just hadn't quite been able to check off that box up to this point. What are the emotions now to basically, I guess, leveling up and saying that you've now won at that next level higher on the ladder? Oh, you're muted. Sorry, the projector for my path and, and all that stuff, um, it's huge for me, right? Uh, obviously, we started out with the Super Late stuff and the Arca West stuff, and we won the Arca West series, and we've won some Super Late races as well, um, and been really good in that lately, too. So uh, it was really important for me to be able to write my year off as a, as a success to win this weekend, because um, this is my last race of the year for Veterinary Motorsports, and we've run second. You know, I don't think we run third, but we run second, fourth, and all that stuff, and we've been really close and on the podium and on the front stretch and all that stuff, but uh, we haven't quite been able to get the deal done. So um, it was really important for me, like I said, to make sure my year was like, like wrote off as a success to win um, in everything I ran in. And uh, we were able to do that on Saturday night uh, and it was huge. And it was, it was great to go heads up with Ty and beat him. Um, you know, he's one of the best right now um, in pretty much anything he wants to go run. Um, so it felt really good and um, it gives me a lot of confidence for, for next year. And um, yeah, I was really, really stoked to get it done. And, you know, I want to be able to win and everything I can run it. Right. So um, to kind of, you know, play my plead my bid for um, trucks in a few years and, and all that stuff, it's really important to win and be able to dominate at this level. Right. So um, I'm definitely not at dominating a level yet, but um, it was definitely a big start and uh, should be able to do that and complete that goal by next year. So let's talk about the race itself now. It started fourth and he had some traffic to dig through there at the beginning after, after starting back and forth. Uh, but it really didn't seem like, at least from the outside looking in, that you really had a winning car there until after that last break. Was, was that the case? And if so, what was the change there on the last break that got you that much faster or did Ty just kind of fall back to you? Yeah. I mean, it was, it, you're pretty much spot on there. Like we were um, pretty much the second best car up until that point. Um, I was definitely the best car through traffic, lap traffic. I'd always gain about a second on Ty um, and kind of put me back in the ballpark. Right. But we definitely needed to pick up what we thought was about eight hundredths to be able to run with Ty um, and to get in front of him and, and actually outrun him would be about a tenth is what we needed. So, um, you know, I, the actual change itself was just as simple as a right front camber shim. Um, and that was all I needed really through one and two to um, get to where Ty was at uh, and be able to cut that corner like he was. So we were able to, to do that change uh, after the last pit stop, put four tires on it. And, um, and, you know, I would say the biggest thing that really won us the race was putting Ty in dirty air um, and, and not making a mistake. It's hard to pass at that place. And um, I was better than Ty was in a few spots. And I was able to pull away off of two pretty good and, um, and just be low in three and four and, and kind of take the air off his nose. And, um, you know, right now with how close, you know, race cars are right now, especially in, in NASCAR, um, just that bit of that less air on your nose is a, the biggest change you can really get it to put you behind the eight ball. So um, I was dealing with it all throughout uh, the race and I knew I needed to get, you know, the restart to be able to put him in dirty air. So, and after that, we were able to pull away. So I think uh, being able to pull away was, was definitely 
that last, you know, change. Uh, we did more than just right front camera shim on the last pit stop. But um, as far as being able to turn the center like he was, I think that was most of it right there. So um, it, yeah, it was great. And uh, the crew chief, my crew chief, Kevin Reed, he made a great, great call on all our pit stops and, and staying on the same uh, strategy as Ty. I know a lot of guys took four tires and at the first break, but um, I just wanted to stay on strategy with Ty to have a shot at beating him heads up at the end. That's that's amazing thinking about that uh, dirty air was that big of a factor, even on a short track, because we, we talk about how dirty air is such a big deal, even on the bigger tracks. But mm -hmm. is it is it that big of a factor, even on a short track? I'll tell you what, the biggest place that I went to this year that was the biggest for dirty air was a dirt race at Springfield. Hmm. Um, and that was the most aero dependent racetrack that I've been to this year which is what I was going into probably the least concern as far as arrow went. Mm -hmm. But uh, so I guess the reason I'm bringing that up is there's places that you might think arrow is not going to be a big change, but, um, or make a big difference, but it will. Um, so this weekend, I mean, you're going pretty fast um, around that half mile and uh, especially through three and four, I mean, it, it's kind of, you're driving similar to Bristol. I mean, you're barely out of the gas. It's more like Darlington and one and two, like you're back in the gas to drive back up towards the wall. Um, so you're going really fast and you're hooked up around there. And in, in that sense, arrow was going to be pretty decent, big factor there. And then one and two, um, it's not as big and you, cause you can keep a headlight out. Um, but at the same time, it, it's still going to be, um, a factor no matter pretty much where you go. So different tracks will be more or less, uh, but it'll definitely slow you down for sure. Okay, so now let's talk about, uh, I know the answer to this, but I, I know a lot of people, I've seen a lot of questions about this um, around social media and that kind of thing. What is that new sponsor you've had on your hood the last couple main ARCA races with the cat there? What What is that? Yeah, so basically it's an NFT, which is, you can think of it like a cryptocurrency, um, but it is it stands for non-fungible token. Um, so it's almost like an online trading card in a sense, right? So it's, it's a community of people that are invested in this cryptocurrency. And um, what makes our NFT special, I mean, Stephen Curry has one, uh, Mike Tyson has one, the balls have one, right? So a lot of um, athletes do have them. What makes our special is that um, you can go online and, and when we make drops, like we'll drop moments. So like kind of like almost like online hero cards or trading cards, we dropped a moment um, about a month ago for um, our youngest NASCAR champion history um, card, right? And, mm -hmm. and it sold out overnight. We only, it was a select drop because we weren't sure. We were kind of testing the waters. Um, we've been guided uh, by Rex, um, who is who's really big in the NFT community. And he was kind of the one that set it all up and told us what to do, how to do it, and all that stuff. So, um he kind of took the lead and he wanted to make a small drop to see if it would sell out. It sold out overnight. Um, you know, they were reselling for thousands of dollars and, and it, uh, it funded our race for Bristol. Uh, we kept it on the car for, um, for, for Salem and, and it worked out. So um, it's pretty cool. And, and just the fact that we can take the people that bought our uh, invest in our um, NFT, we can put their logos on our car so they're almost like sponsoring our, our race car. So that's what makes ours unique and what's, that's what makes ours special. And, um, and it worked out. So um, I'm still learning about it as well. I encourage anybody that's interested in it to go check it out for themselves and um, learn about it with me because I'm still learning too. So it's really cool. And uh, the fact that it can sponsor a race car and, and help fund races is really cool. Nice. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, all right. So let's move on. Fairly quick turnaround to this weekend. You're back on the west side this weekend now at All American Speedway, Roseville. Um, what are you expecting out of that one? You've been there once now. Last season finished fourth. Uh, what are you expecting this weekend? Yeah, just obviously to win the race. I mean, last year we had a we had a motor problem at Vegas, uh, and we thought we fixed the issue, but we had the same problem at All American last year. So we were running about seven cylinders in practice, and then. We, uh, we until we realized the problem, we thought we fixed it for the race. It wasn't fixed, and um, we uh, knocked the spark plug wire off of it as well. So we ran about six cylinders. I was running about third gear on the racetrack for most of the race, which was not ideal. Um, so I mean, we obviously were just trying to make it out of that race with 
like decent points. Um, I mean, we were running like tenth, like because we had no motor. Um, we had a really great handling race car, but you know you can't make up for down two cylinders on horsepower. So um, the big crash at the end, I was able to to get through and, and and get through that clean, and then that's what got us a decent finish. But this weekend, um, I know there'll be at least one East Coast car with uh, Taylor Gray there, but um, we are running at Vegas, and uh, we were the best car there until the right front tire went down. And um, I mean, I have a lot of confidence in my team right now. Uh, Bill McNally Racing, uh, they brought great race cars to the racetrack. My crew chief, Travis Sharp, has been on kill lately and uh, has brought me, I mean, amazing race cars pretty much everywhere we went this year. So um, I'm really happy with, with how that deal is going. And uh, we've had some some bad luck with, especially at Vegas. I mean, we should almost be, you know, sealed up for the rest of the year. And, and we should be able to go to Vegas or sorry, go to Phoenix with, you know, not have to worry about points. But um, we had that right front tire go down uh, leading the race at, at Vegas. So uh, the points is obviously cut down now, but we gotta go make, we have to go make up for it. So, um, you know, something that's going to happen, but that's what makes us champions is, is we'll go rebound from it. And uh you know, expect nothing less than to win the race. Well, actually, that reminds me with Vegas, speaking of that tire, uh, did you ever figure out what happened with that? Was there ever any explanation for why that ended up going down when you were leading? Yeah, so we what we assume what happened, uh, the track was pretty dirty. Um, I radioed a few times that there was a beer on the racetrack. It didn't get resolved, and uh, we probably ran over something like fiberglass or something. It was just a small puncture in the tire. Um, but it was small enough to where, like, at first it was just, okay, all of a sudden I was free all night at Vegas. And then all of a sudden, okay, I was like, hey, Travis, I'm tight right now, which was I, which was weird. Um, mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden the wheel got really heavy and it got even tighter and tighter. We came down pit road um, under yellow, lost a lap because of it, trying to figure out what it was. Because, um, I mean, we dropped off like a second and it wasn't, wasn't handling at all. And, um, and everything looked fine. We try to get back out before going a lap down and then it got worse I mean I was having a downshift in the corner to, to keep it going it started hit this started hit the splitter on the racetrack so we knew what it was then probably just right front tire or suspension failure suspension looked fine we put an air gauge to the tire and it was only like 11 pounds so um we changed the tire and we went back out and we we're best car on the racetrack again so um one of those deals where obviously we that shouldn't have happened and um it was obviously a bummer, but at the same time, there's some things you can't control in racing. And the only way you can control those is how you respond to them. So I think we respond the best we could. Uh, we passed all the, the uh, non lead lap cars to put ourselves in a lucky dog position. And we just waited for a caution. There was never a caution. So um, that was obviously a really big shame. I never won at Vegas in an ARCA car. Uh, I run second to Sam Mayer in the first race last year there. In the second race, we had a motor failure uh, leading the race. We ended up running third. So it was just kind of like they really wanted to get that one. Uh, Vegas is like a second home to me when I was growing up. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm bummed out about it for sure. But, um, I mean, we outrun the East Coast car, and, and we did everything we needed to do. So I was really happy with, with Bill and with Travis and with everybody. All right. Well, I think that's all I got for you today. So, Thanks for joining us today, Jesse. Congratulations on the, the win at Salem and good luck at Roseville on Saturday. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Have a great weekend. God bless.